Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another By Request song tutorial. In today's session, I'm going to be breaking down the Beatles 1964 classic, And I Love Her. Now I'm going to be showing you how to play the rhythm and lead guitar parts for the verse sections and also George's iconic guitar solo. I got a full PDF study guide with tabs at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. As always, you can become a member there and gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now let's get started with a full demonstration of the tune that will also give me the opportunity to test drive two new microphones that I'm using. I'm going to be using the Earthworks SV33 on my vocals and I'm going to be using the Earthworks SR25 fantastic mic on the guitar. Let's get started. A one, two, three. Okay, close look at the fretboard and also my pick in hand, getting started with our intro section. We're in standard tuning, key of E major, though later on in the song we will be transitioning to the key of F. So this is actually two guitar parts, one played by George and the other played by John. First I'm going to show you how to play them separately uh, for two guitar players, then I'll show you how you can combine them for solo performance. Okay, getting started with George's main riff. It's going to sound like this, nice and slow. <laughs> And at speed, one, two, three, and four, and one. Okay, so very, very simple. We're playing the second fret of the A string. Then we're going to the D string second fret, using my middle finger and my ring finger in kind of an E major configuration. Now I'm on an E note. I'm gonna go down a half step to E flat, first fret of the D string. Then I'm going to go to C sharp, the fourth fret of the A string, to complete the main riff. Okay, you can get your pick alternated. Down, up, down, up, just like that. Okay, then right there on that first beat of the next measure, and four, and just as that C sharp comes in, that's where John's going to come in with the rhythm part. Okay, very good. So George is going to keep that riff going, coming in every other measure with that riff on the N4N. End and he's going to be using it to usher in the next chord. As he's playing that, John is going to be playing just a very simple chord progression. F sharp minor, bar in the second fret, and then using your ring finger and your pinky 
on the fourth frets of the A and D string. Now, if you watch Paul play live, he takes his index finger and just bars across the G, B, and the high E strings, strumming from the A string down. Okay, technically an F sharp minor slash C sharp. Then we're gonna to transition to the chord that we're calling E6. It's just an E major chord with the pinky on the second fret of the B string. Really beautiful sounding chord. Okay, so we take the F sharp minor and we're going to apply the one strumming pattern that we're going to be using throughout the song. Sounds like this. Okay, so it's just down, 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 up, down, up. That's your main strumming pattern there. Okay, so we need to do that twice over the F sharp minor chord and also over the E6 chord. Now remember, George's part is going to be ushering in each of the chord changes. Okay, so applying the strumming pattern to the F sharp to E6 change, it sounds like this. Bum, 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 bum. and that'll get you into the first verse. Now, let's learn to combine those two parts. Okay, combining George's lead riff with John's rhythm. I'll start off the exact same way. One, two, three, and four, and one. Performing the riff, and then getting myself to the F sharp minor chord. But, I've just replaced the first strum of the strumming pattern with that C sharp note on the A string fourth fret. So, one, Two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. There I'm gonna stop and repeat the riff again. So I'm replacing parts of the strumming pattern with the riff. That'll get me to the E6 chord where I can perform the strumming pattern. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Then repeat the riff to get myself back to F sharp minor. Now sometimes when I go to the E6 chord, I don't bother to strum the entire chord on that first beat. It's a little bit easier to just hit the root note as you're transitioning from the riff to the strumming pattern. Applying that technique, putting the whole thing together, it would sound like this nice and slow. A one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, Riff. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and I give her all my love to start your verse. Okay, excellent work, everybody. We have the intro section down. Now we're jumping into the verse in the key of E. We're taking our F sharp minor chord. And we're going to be bouncing back and forth between this chord shape and another bar shape, C sharp minor. Okay, I'm barring the fourth fret, A string to the high E string, then setting up a shape that looks like A minor. We have the sixth frets of the D and G, and the fifth fret of the B string. We need to go back and forth between these two chords three times. I give her all my love. That's all I do. One more time. And if you saw my love. Next, we're gonna go to A major to B7. You'd love her too. And I finish it up with the E major chord. You could also use the E6 here. And I love her. Okay, so each of those chords is going to get one measure with the exception of that final E major chord. So applying our strumming pattern, we'll have one, two, three, F sharp. C sharp minor. F sharp minor. C sharp minor. F sharp minor. C sharp minor. A major. Seven, E major. That'll 
Okay, and then that will get you into verse number two, which will be identical, but will feature George's arpeggio pattern underneath as a really, really cool and very useful lead line. Okay, moving right along, we have the intro and the first verse complete. Now we're jumping into verse number two. Now in terms of rhythm, that's going to be identical to verse number one, but underneath of that F sharp minor to C sharp minor, A major, B7, and E major chord progression, George is going to be playing the exact same chords using some very basic three string triads way up here in the ninth fret position. It's gonna sound like this, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the first chord shape we have is F sharp minor. We're going to grab the 11th fret of the G string, 10th fret of the B, and the 9th fret of the high E string. A little F sharp minor triad. But to make things a little bit easier in terms of transition, I'm going to bar across the G, B, and high E strings. It's just going to make it easier for me to be able to balance between the different chord shapes. Doesn't change the sound at all. Okay, on this chord we're going to play G, B, E, B, and repeat. Very simple picking pattern that will continue throughout this entire sequence. Okay, I like to have my pick alternating down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. All right, then I'm going to transition to C sharp minor. Just going to remove the ring finger and the middle finger. Barring across those three strings, repeating the picking pattern. So, so far you have F sharp minor, C sharp minor. Okay, following along using your tablature at patreon.com slash lessons, the next line of tab is going to be exactly the same. F sharp minor, C sharp minor. Okay, then on to line number three, it's more of the same. The kiss my lover brings. Ah, and here's where it's going to change, line number four. We're going to make an A major chord, which is just going to be the D shape. The ninth fret of the G string, 10th fret of the B string, and the ninth fret of the high E string. Some players will continue to keep the bar and play in this kind of a configuration, maybe using the ring finger or the middle finger. But I'll keep with the D major chord shape. There's my picking pattern. Next, I'm going to go to B7. So this is A major. Now the B7 chord, if you're playing as a simple triad on three strings, will look and sound like this. Just a D7 looking shape. We have the 11th fret of the G string, the 10th fret of the B string, and the ring fingers here on the high E string, 11th fret. Okay, for B dominant seven. Repeat the pattern. Okay, then finally we're going to go back to that C sharp minor shape, but in this particular case, it's going to be representing E major. Remember, those two chords are relatives to each other. They have a lot of the same notes, so we can get away with using the exact same shape for the E chord. Okay, so for that chord, we're going to play one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, now let's play through that entire arpeggio sequence, starting with the F sharp minor. A one, two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four F sharp. C sharp. F sharp. C sharp. Seven. E. Just like that. 
Okay, tremendous work, everybody. We have the intro section and verse one and two, including George's arpeggio sequence. Now we're jumping into the bridge section. This is just going to be another bar chord progression with that same exact strumming pattern. Getting started with C sharp minor. We already know this chord. Now we're gonna be transitioning down to the chord B major. We're going to bar the second fret, A string to high E string, then there's two things that you can do here. You can play uh, with the A chord shape. We can have the middle finger, the ring finger, and the pinky on the fourth frets of the D, G, and B strings. It's a very popular way of playing the B major chord. Or you can play it like me. You can uh, just grab the second fret of the A string and then bar those three strings, D, G, and B strings, with the ring finger. Okay, now if you're playing it this way, the high E string will be muted, but it does sound very nice to play the high E string fourth fret with this chord. So, a love like eyes. Very, very beautiful sound. Okay, we'll go back to the C sharp minor. Could never. Then, we're going to go to the chord G sharp minor. Okay, we're going to bar the entire fourth fret. Then, we're just going to jump these two fingers up to the A and D strings, sixth fret. Okay, all right, you put that entire line together and we have. A love like eyes could never die. All right, we're going to go back to C sharp minor, then repeat the G sharp minor. As long as I have you. Then we're going to go to B major again. Near me for two measures, where you can, as an optional thing, throw in the riff from the intro once again. Okay, let's take that chord progression. Remember, it's C sharp minor to B, C sharp minor to G sharp minor, and then repeat that C sharp minor to G sharp minor to B. With the strumming pattern, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Down, 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 up, down, up. C sharp, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, G sharp, and B, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Okay, and then that riff from the intro will get you into the third verse. Okay, so next we would have that third verse. Luckily, it's identical to verse number two. We're going to have the exact same chord progression with George's arpeggio line underneath of it. After that, we're going to jump into the guitar solo section where everything is going to modulate up one half step. So the chord progression is going to be exactly the same as the verse, but everything's up one fret. The F sharp minor will become G minor. The C sharp minor will become D minor. And we'll repeat back and forth between those two chords. Then the A major chord will become B flat. And then the B7 chord will become C7. Ba, ba. Okay, so we already know how to do the B flat chord. We have the first fret of the A string and then the ring finger barring across the D, G, and B strings uh, on the third fret. Then the C7 chord, take a C major chord. Okay, so three, two, one. And you're putting your pinky on the G string third fret for C7. Then finally, the final chord that we're going to have is going to be the F major chord. Okay, so going up a half step from E. And we'll have that for two measures. Putting that whole thing together with the strumming pattern, it'll sound like this, starting with G minor. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and D minor. flat C7 and F major
Okay, now let's tackle George's guitar solo. Okay, tackling this lick by lick. Before we jump in, just know that George plays around with the rhythm quite a bit during the solo, so don't worry about matching his rhythm precisely. Play around with it, uh, feel the rhythm, and make it your own. Your first lick is going to sound something like this. Okay, so the fifth fret of the D string, the G string second fret, up a half step to three, then to the B string fifth fret, then as the D minor chord comes in, we're going down to three, and then sliding up to six. Okay, that's coming in somewhere in between uh, beats two and three. So one, two, and... Okay. Now the next phrase is going to be very, very similar, and it will complete uh, the first line of tablature that you see there. So the next phrase is going to sound like this. Okay, so that one was a little bit straighter. We have the fifth fret of the D string, then to the G string, two, three. Then we're going to go to the B string, five, and then slide down to three. Okay. Now we're going to repeat Lick number one. Okay, a little bit syncopated. Then as the B flat major chord comes in, we're going to play. All right, then the C7 chord will come in and we'll play. All right, to complete one phrase there. So one more time. Okay, so that was the B string six to three, G string three, seventh fret of the D string, and then we're going to slide down to five. All right, then to wrap things up, we have two more licks. Transition into the F major chord, we'll play. All right, A string three, three, zero, and then second fret of the G string. Then, finally, the second measure of the F major chord will play. This really cool classic lick, the perfect way to wrap this solo up. Third fret of the A string, open A. Third fret of the low E string, down to one, and then sliding up to three. Okay, now let's play through the entire solo. One, two, three, four, one, two. Just like that. Okay, fantastic work everybody. We have the intro section. We have the first verse, the second verse with George's arpeggio pattern. We moved into the bridge. We have verse number three, and we've also mastered the rhythm and lead sections for the guitar solo section. Now, looking at verse number four, we're just going to simply apply the rhythm section to the guitar solo to a verse. So getting started with the G minor to D minor change. Bright are the stars. Dark is the sky. G minor. I know this love of mine. Alright, now we're gonna go to B flat to C7. Now when I go to this B flat chord, I like to bar all the way to the high E string and actually make it a B flat six chord. That sounds fantastic. We'll never die. Alright, then. Finally, we're going to the F major chord, where we're going to transition into the outro. We'll play, and I love her. One, two, three. So, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, down. And then we're gonna throw in the riff transposed up one half step. 
to get into the outro. Okay, jumping into the outro, the last thing that you need to learn before you're able to perform. We're going to start off with the riff, transposed up one half step. Okay, so that was three, three, two, five, to get to beat number one. And four and one. Put your G minor chord together. You can play it like this, or with the full bar, whatever you prefer. Okay, so, and four and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Then repeat the riff again, but this time end with the open D string to transition to an open D minor chord. Okay, so with the riff one more time. And four and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Then repeat the first riff again. And go back to G minor. And four and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Then we're going to finish it up with this really just genius chord change go into the D major chord for this really bizarre sense of resolution. Okay, so just the riff. Three, three, two, and a strum of the D major chord. And it sounds great if you go from the A string down for this chord. Okay, playing through the entire outro. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, things up. Congratulations, everybody. You're ready to perform. All right, friends. Thanks so much for checking out this Beatles guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have a song that you would like for me to teach next, click through the link in the description to swiftlessons.com and put in your request now. Big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. You guys are making all these lessons possible, and I hope you're enjoying your extra resources. Thanks to you guys. i got many more lessons coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe. Please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.